Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. Jesus name A great light dawns in Galilee Some say madman, some say king. Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take to free us all from sin and grace. Perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming Devil you're done, you better start running Friday's good cause Sunday's coming So we let those soldiers take him in As his friend betrayed him with a kiss And there before the mocking crowd Like a lamb to the sky Well, good morning, Hope Community Church. Welcome to our celebration slash state of the church service. We're excited that you're here with us today. There is joy. It is good to be in the house of hope. Amen? I just wanted to steal that from Jacob one time. I just wanted it once. This is my morning, so I'm shooting my shot. Let's stand to our feet, church. Let's sing together, choir. Let's join in.
amen, amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of hope, amen? amen. Oh, it is so good to see you this morning for our celebration service. My name is Jacob Simmons, and I am the pastor here at Hope Community Church, and we are so glad you are here today to celebrate all that God has done in 2023, all that God has done over the past three plus years of church revitalization here, all that God has done for over 128 years here on this campus. We are glad you are here today. Uh, if you are a guest with us, and we have a few, if you would take that connection card from the pew pocket in front of you, complete that information, and drop it in the offering plate at the conclusion of the service, uh, we will get an opportunity to say thank you for being here today. For our under 35 crowd, we have a QR code, and I say that, I just turned 40, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Give me the pen and paper. Uh, that's fine. But for uh, the Gen Z among us and Miss Olga, you can uh, use the QR code. Uh, give us the same information. And I know many of you are, are visiting with us this morning from other churches. We're not pressuring you. But fill out that information just so that you can be a personal encouragement to myself and to our staff of being here. We'll let you know the many great things happening here at Hope Community Church. Things like new Sunday school classes that are starting uh, in February. Hope Basketball that starts this Saturday. Or Discover Hope, our information and membership class that happens next week. Our service is going to be a little different. I'm going to speak for a little while, uh, give a state of the church and, and a full report. It's going to go about 20 minutes or so. We've got a few things going. We're going to see a video. We're going to sing songs. We're going to hear from our guest preacher. Danny Wood is here this morning. Danny, we are so glad you're here. Uh, it felt fitting that when we started Hope Community Church, November 1, 2020, Danny preached that sermon uh, to have kind of him conclude and encourage us going forward. So Danny, we're really glad you were here. Thanks for being here today. Uh, it's going to be a longer service, so go ahead and strap in a little bit. We feel okay about it because you're not rushing the Methodists to lunch. We've got lunch ready for you in the fellowship hall right after this. Know this, that we're glad you're here today. All right, we're going to get started with the state of the church. We have a choir here. I'm not used to anybody looking over my shoulder, uh, but I'm so glad you guys are here today. You look fantastic, and you sound great, by the way. Uh, we're going to start with a financial report of 2023. There's nothing more fun than starting with money talk. So we're going to talk about money for just a moment. In 2023, we had a, a total tithes and offering budget of $750,000. Church, I'm excited to report to you that our total tithes and offerings received for 2023 was $947,000. $8.35.67. This is amazing. I mean, this is amazing. You can ask my wife. I always tear up talking about budgets. Uh, but look at this. This is over, this is almost $200,000 over and above what we expected for 2023. Uh, this is miraculous uh, in so many ways. And it's the miracle of God providing for us through his people, through your faithful giving and sacrifice. And I want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your obedience and your service and your sacrifice to our church through your tithes and offerings. Uh, now, when we get to the other side of the budget, how much we spent, I do want to tell you that we overspent by a little bit, and it was in two main areas. Uh, the first was increased facility costs. This is going to come as a surprise to no one. Our building is big and beautiful and also a little expensive. And so as utility costs uh, rise, uh, so have our payments. Now, part of this overspending the budget was due to, at the end of 2022, I said to Doug, I said, hey, we're going to have a Spartan budget in 2023. And we got aggressive, and we got a little too aggressive. Some of it was unreasonable budgeting, and so for 2024, we have fixed that and addressed it and shouldn't go over. Others were for um, rising utility costs, and when Ms. Shree was on bereavement and Doug was having uh, a baby, we had uh, to incur some cleaning costs costs as well with professional cleaners. Um, the other is the increased administrative costs. We just had some, some rising costs in insurance this year and some transition fees as we've moved towards autonomy and in some banking fees related to online giving. So as it relates to online giving, we've seen an increased percentage give online, and that is wonderful. Keep doing that. But you will also see in this new year a little box that you can check to help uh, recoup some of those uh, costs and fees related to online giving. That will be your option, but that will help us a little bit. But 
with our overgiving uh, and overspending a little bit, I wanted to let you know that our total net surplus for 2023 was $166,782.08. This is amazing, and I want to tell you why. It's amazing because uh, when we set our budget for 2024, the way we budget it is what we feel like we need to do for the next, this next year. And so what do we need to do to, to move our ministry forward? And then in light of that, what do we expect to take in and how much are we going to ask partners to help support us? We thought we needed for 2024 $150,000 for partner support. Church, do you believe that God knows what you need before you even ask him? Do you believe? Because right here, we were praying that partners would provide for us $150,000 to move the ministries forward, and already God was working in our community to provide for us exactly what we needed. This is amazing. This is a testament to God's faithfulness to us, to his provision for us. And I'm not going to preach, but I'm not going to miss the opportunity to say, church, do you believe that God will provide for you? Do you believe that God will be faithful to you? Even down to pennies in the bank, he can provide for you. And it's in that spirit that we move forward in this next year. And I am so excited about it. I'm reminded of when this started in 2020. Uh, Danny called me into his office and said, we think we have a unique opportunity for you. Suzanne and I had already been praying for a year about what might be next. So when he presented the opportunity to come and do church revitalization at McElwain, I said, we can pray about it. But the answer is already going to be yes, because we've already been praying. You are an answer to prayer for me and my family. And I believe we're an answer to prayer for you as we've brought this together. But there was going to be, thank you, thank you, thank you. But Danny said, we have to first do some due diligence. We got to look under the hood a little bit and see what this is going to cost this church revitalization. And so they looked around the building and personnel and everything that came along with that and said, we think it's going to cost about a million dollars. And a million dollars is a million dollars. It doesn't matter how big a church is, a million dollars is a lot of money. But when you know it, in 2020, during the COVID pandemic, Danny and the leadership at Shades Mountain Baptist said, hey, there's a lot of ministry things we're not going to get to do because we're not meeting in person, and we don't know what tithes and offerings are going to look like. Let's cut our budget by a significant amount so that we can be wise and thoughtful. And that significant amount was $1 million. And so when Shades Mountain Baptist met their budget, Shades had $1 million to devote to church revitalization to McElwain and to Hope Community Church. We are now at the beginning and at the end seeing evidence in this report of God's faithful provision to our work here. And it's amazing. All right. Sexy stuff. The budget. A lot of fun. Our sharing hope budget, we have an operating budget and a sharing hope budget where 100% of those dollars go to missions and ministries that we support. Uh, we budgeted for $38,500 in 2023 and we received $42,258 last year, which is fantastic. <laughs> This means that we have fulfilled our obligations to the IMB and the Lottie Moon offering, to the North American Mission Board and the Annie Armstrong offering, to the BMBA, the Birmingham Metro Baptist Association, to the Grady family in Manaus, Brazil, uh, to Living Faith Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, to Save a Life, we have some friends from Save a Life here today, to Serving Youth, Benevolence Ministries, to Awaken Ministries, to Crestwood Day School, and to Brother Brian Missions. Uh, we also have some money left over that we're setting aside to hopefully give towards a Spanish-speaking church plant that might meet here on our campus. We're praying about that moving forward. This means that our total missions giving between Sharing Hope and the cooperative program was $62,162 in 2023. And you can clap for that. Uh, this represents 6.5% of our total tithes and offerings, up from 6.2% last year, and on our way to 10%, which is going to be our good and healthy goal. Not only do we fill our financial commitments, but we sent mission teams to Manaus, Brazil to, worship, uh, to work with the Grady family. And sent a mission team to Indianapolis to work with Living Faith Church in Yale and Autumn Wall up there. Uh, we hosted the Lafferty family over uh, Sharing Hope weekend, the Grady family in October, and we hosted the Watfords before they went back on mission in the Middle East. 
Uh, and uh, Mike, it's a lot of fun to always support you guys uh, with the IMB. We also served right here in our community with our Love Your Neighbor emphasis in 2023, where we asked our Sunday school classes to find service projects in their community to love their neighbors. I can't list them all, but I will tell you this. Last year, we served with Brother Brian, served a meal, led a service, and offered hygiene supplies. We offered items for a baby boutique for Save a Life. We served monthly with Community Food Bank of Alabama and served weekly with a Christian service mission. Uh, on our campus, we maintained the cemetery across the street, which, did you know, legally is not ours, but it has the McElwain name on it, and so we better keep it up. And so some uh, faithful deacons have been doing that, in addition to painting picnic tables on our pavilion. We provided and served meals for the Ronald McDonald House and off offered breakfast items. We provided cleaning and caring services for a community family in need every week. Gave Christmas stockings to a mission church in Leeds. Provided uh, b the blessing box every single week on our campus. Provided snacks and goodies for our community helpers. Yard work for our neighbors right behind us. Uh, collected and provided snacks for the CDC teachers and staff. And collected items to donate to the BMBA for their statewide Ministry Safe Conference. You guys have loved your neighbors well this year. And I want to thank you and encourage you. If you are not part of a Sunday school class, this is a great reason to be a part of one. Because as they uh, study the Bible together, grow together, pray together, they're also serving together. And we're going to find more ways for our Sunday school classes to serve our community. Thank you guys so much for your service this last year. We have a campus operations report where we had a f uh, several significant projects this past year. We upgraded the audio-visual sound system and screens uh, here in our sanctuary, and I'll tell you, they are so much better than what we used to have. <laughs> it was much needed, and they're amazing. Jeff and Craig and the team did a great job getting those up and useful, and we love it. We also have a new production room back in the old choir robing room. If you never popped your head back there, you need to do it. They produce our live stream, and they're doing a wonderful job. And you've also noticed that we we had a lot of volunteers who were probably serving here that you haven't seen for a while. Well, they're serving back there. Lim and Chris and Grant and a great team is serving right back there, uh, producing our live stream every week, and they're doing a great job. If you want to learn a little bit about uh, production technology, we need some more volunteers. So uh, let us know. We would love to get you connected to that ministry back there. Next to it, uh, the, the other half of the old choir robing room is now a nursing room, which was finished just in time for the big baby boom of 2023. Uh, it's getting a lot of use right now. We're growing a lot of big boys in this church, uh, and you need to see that nursing room. It's fantastic. Uh, we also, my favorite project is we finished the pavilion out there uh, at the park. It took all of 2023 to finish it, but it got done. And my dream is I would love to see Sunday school classes having lunch out there, birthday parties out there, community events out there. Let us know if you want to use that pavilion. We would love to see you use it. It is made for our neighbors and for our community, and we're excited about that. In 2024, one big project, among others, but a big one that I want us to, uh, to undertake is a new signage all across campus. I've shoulder-tapped Craig Garrison to lead us in those efforts. You're going to be seeing more about that in the days ahead, but we have big projects for the year ahead. I want to give a quick ministry report. I can't talk about everything, but I want to highlight a few things. Our CDC continues to thrive. We have 87 children enrolled and 29 staff. It is a great ministry to our community, and Missy and her team are doing a wonderful job. Last year, we had over 70 services between Sunday mornings, weddings, funerals, and other services that took 60 volunteers. To you volunteers, thank you so much for serving our church in this way. Last year, we had five baptisms here at Hope Community Church, which is wonderful. That's five people who've put their faith in Jesus Christ and have joined our church, and we celebrate that. We dedicated one baby and commissioned one graduate, so that, that values out. Uh, we had two students go to worship camp at Animate at Sanford University, and three students go to student life camp. On our campus, we had VBS with 30 kids. We had 35 families come to our Easter egg hunt and 32 families come to our trunk or treat. We had a dog day where we had 7,000 dogs on campus. I was responsible for counting, and as a non-dog person, it felt like 7,000. I guess technically that's 1,000 dogs in dog years. Uh, I don't know the exact math, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and we'll do that again. And with similar math, we sold 2 million pumpkins at our pumpkin patch. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you, those who served our pumpkin patch. We did take in over $3,000, uh, and it was a lot of fun. We'll do that again next year. We hosted a gingerbread uh, house party. We hosted upward basketball. We hosted upward soccer. This Saturday, we have upward basketball. Big Mike is going to help us lead that. We have 30 kids signed up already, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun this Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we hosted date night in July, hosted the Revive Summit for church revitalization in September, hosted a Christmas sing-along, and the highlight of our year was hosting Pine Cove City with 108 children on our campus. We also transitioned our Wednesday night programming from Celebrate Recovery to Celebrate Hope. That leadership came with a great and wonderful plan to broaden those ministries, and they're meeting every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. They have a meal that's free, provided for you, and then they gather together to talk about what it means to be a faithful believer in a difficult world, and that team is doing a wonderful job. Joel, thank you so much for leading that. You're all welcome to join us Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. Uh, lastly, our HR report, Doug Steele tendered his resignation. We celebrated him with coffee and donuts. Please pray for us as we interview candidates for this position in the days ahead. So that's looking back. God has done a lot of great things this year, and I want to celebrate those also with an eye towards what's ahead because we have a lot of work ahead of us. We prayed for uh, partners, and I want to give a, a great report that we have a number of churches that are going to partner with us this next year. Shades Mountain Baptist is going to continue to be a partner, and we're so excited about that. Uh, the Birmingham Metro Baptist Associate, Association, BMBA, is going to partner with us both financially and providing some administrative resources. Dr. Chris Crane is here, and we're so glad you're here, uh, Chris. Chris has a vested interest in our church because his daughter Lauren joined our church this past year. She's at Mississippi College. She graduates this year, and she's going to be asking one of you for a job in the coming months, so please get ready for that. You're welcome, Chris. Um, Dawson Memorial Baptist Church is going to partner with us this next year. First Baptist Church Decatur is going to partner with us. Their pastor is Blake Kersey, and he's going to preach our Sharing Hope weekend at the end of April, and we're really excited about that. Redeemer Community Church is going to partner with us, and Mountain Brook Baptist Church is going to partner with us, and we are so excited that uh, these partners have come on board. And let me just tell you, because of our overage this past year, it really makes these conversations about partnership so much easier because these are not partners to keep us surviving, but no, these are partners who are helping us move the ministry forward, who don't have to provide if they don't want to, but because they see what's happening here, they see church revitalization, they hear the testimonies of Hope Community Church, they want to be a part of this and they want to help us moving forward, and I am so, so thankful. So let's give a round of applause for our partners. All right, also lo looking forward, I want to introduce you to your church leadership for this next year. Uh, we have three bodies that are serving in church leadership, a deacon body, a finance body, and a church advisory council. Well, this time, I'm going to ask the deacon body to come forward this time and stand right over here. Our deacons include Stephen Church, Walker Gann, Craig Garrison, Tim Justice, Mike Reese, and Adam Rutledge. And then we're uh, bringing on six new deacons, Riley Adair, Banks Haley, Mike Hooten, Cole Connor, Roman Malott, and Joel Wingett. And those last three, Cole and Roman and Joel, are going to be ordained on February 4th on a Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to invite you to come back to hear their testimonies and pray for them. Uh, let's give a, a big thanks to our deacon body. And then right over here, I'm going to introduce our finance team. This includes Richard Phillips, Savannah Harwood, Peter Juan, Tracy Adair, and Walker Gann. And Walker, you're doing double duty, so you're going to decide where you want to stand for this a little bit. Uh, yo, uh, all right, very good. Uh, this team has already been up and functioning and meeting, and we just do whatever Richard Phillips tells us to do. No, uh, this, they set the budget, they're advising, uh, they're, we're communicating well together, and this team is fantastic. Let's thank our uh, advisor our finance team. And then we have an advisory council. I'm going to start with uh, Mike and Barry. Y'all come up here and stand in the center. Mike and Barry are serving as elders in our church. And the elders set the theological foundation for the church. So, so things about what's preached and what's taught. Y'all stand out here in the middle. Uh, and, and church membership, the elders are leading in that. And we've also asked for, in addition to the advi an advisory council, that's going to be a member of the finance team. It's going to be Savannah. It's going to be a member of the deacons. And we're voting tomorrow night on who the chairman's going to be. And two 
at-large members, and we've nominated and voted on Grace Mallott and Ray Russell to, to serve those two roles. So Grace is going to come forward, and Ray, you're going to come forward at this time, because I'm going to ask you to pray in just a minute. So you come right up here if you don't mind. I want you to come up here. Thanks, Ray. Uh, so this is your church leadership for 2024. Would you give them a, a round of applause? And I know, I know you're thinking, those are the church leaders, and they are highly capable, so I get to take the year off. No, 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 no. Uh, you have gifts, and we need them in areas of ministry and teaching and all the things that come along with the church. We need your gifts, and we need you to lead in the areas that God is calling you, and we are excited uh, to see how God is calling you and using you in, in this next year. All right, so I'm going to let Savannah say a quick word, and then I'm going to ask Ray Russell, our senior most member, uh, to pray for the leadership of the church. Uh, Savannah, whenever you're ready. Jacob, thank you so much for doing such a great job presenting the budget this morning and talking about the ways our church has been like cared for monetarily. It's just, you've done it so faithfully and it was very kind and it was wonderful. Um, so I chair the finance committee um, and as many of you know, Jacob's working on his PhD and he should be finishing in 2024. That's the plan. Please we'll don't see. hold me to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the finance committee decided unanimously to offer a scholarship to Jacob and cover all of his tuition for 2024. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Ray, would you pray for us? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for 128 years of history. Yes. But we thank you more so for what the future holds. Lord, help us to bring hope to this community, to reach out and touch others in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. Let each one of us pledge ourselves to do what you would have us do and to be what you would have us be. Yes. I pray your anointing spirit upon this leadership that you would give us wisdom and discernment to follow you always, to look in the face of Jesus and to know and to listen to what he says in Isaiah. Do not be afraid. For I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. Yes. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. Hold us up, Lord. Let us be what you would have us be and do what you would have us do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Y'all can go back to your seats. Uh, and sincerely, thank you guys for this. This is a huge help to me and my family. I really, really appreciate it. All right, we're nearing the end of the State of the Church, but I have a, a couple presentations to make. Uh, one, I wanted to, let you, uh, to introduce a, a new friend to me. Um, you may want to know, all right, who is the pastor accountable to? Well, you saw your church leadership, and if ever needs somebody to put me in line, Mike and Barry are going to do it. Um, <laughs> They're, they're just going to do it. But also, um, I have a, a pastor and a coach. You know Danny Wood. Danny's my pastor and has been since 2003. And we get together from time to time, and he encourages me. And we talk about you. Uh, we talk about how things are going, and he advises me. But I've also, uh, I have a new friend. Uh, Gary Hollingsworth is here. Gary, would you stand real quick? Uh, Gary is a, a friend of mine, and he's become my new coach uh, we meet and we talk about you guys as well. We met on the golf course uh, last summer. The Lord put it together. He was looking for somebody, a mentor. I needed a coach. Uh, and so Gary is the one advising me. We're going to hear from him on February 15th. He's going to preach for us. Gary, thank you so much for what you do for me. Gary was the pastor at First Trustville for 1995 to 2005, had a number of ministry posts, and just recently retired as the head of uh, Southern Baptist in South Carolina. Uh, and he's, uh, he thought he was done, but now I make, I'm putting him to work as well. His wife, Gwen, is here. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, I'm also going to call Danny up at this time, and I'm going to call uh, Pastor Josh Clark. Josh Clark is the missions pastor at Shades Mountain Baptist Church. I'm going to ask him to come up here. Uh, Jody is going to play the role of Vanna White because, um, yeah, Jody, great job. You got an applause for your Vanna-ing. 
Um, I've written a letter on our behalf to Shades Mountain Baptist Church thanking them for the work that they've put here and to Hope uh, Community Church. And, and this is a copy of that letter. Jody's going to give it a copy to, to Josh and a copy to Danny. But I want to read that now. We have a number uh, of friends from Shades Mountain here this morning, and, and this is to you. On January 14th, 2024, to the saints of Shades Mountain Baptist Church. On this day of celebration, the members of Hope Community Church wish to offer deep and heartfelt thanksgiving for the generosity and sacrifice of Shades Mountain Baptist Church and her members. In 2020, the Lord initiated a plan wherein Shades Mountain and McElwain would form a new partnership toward the work of church revitalization in East Birmingham. The vision from the onset was for Shades Mountain to help and nurture an older church with new resources and a renewed vision to serve this community and share the hope we have in Jesus Christ until the day that the church was able to stand on her own again. This was a God-sized vision that only he could do, and it required a significant sacrifice of the membership at Shades Mountain. Church revitalization is slow, arduous, and costly. It is both painful and fruitful. In those ways, it looks much like the kingdom of God. Because of your commitment to this work and your selfless sacrifice, this community in East Birmingham gets to witness an old church that has long since proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ be born anew to continue that work for generations to come. Thank you, Shades Mountain, for your generosity. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your your commitment to the kingdom of God. Thank you for your love for others. And thank you for your willingness to live sent right across town in Birmingham. We pray that the Lord continues to bless the saints at Shades Mountain Baptist Church, that your love for God may abound more and more, and that your ministries would continue to be faithful for the glory of God. Specifically, we want to thank those who helped lead this effort. We offer sincere thanks to Danny Wood, Chad Kosovum, and Tim Wheat, who helped initiate this work and led in this God-sized vision. We offer thanks to George Wright and Josh Clark, who have joined this work as advisors and encouragers. We offer thanks to Tom Boston, whose gifts and counsel were invaluable. We offer thanks to Denise Bruce, Ronnie Hardy, Tori Harris, Ryan Maynard, Kim Sims, and Deborah McWaters, who took on extra work beyond their own workload to help us get started and running smoothly. We offer thanks to the many of you who prayed for us, encouraged us, visited us, financially supported us, served us and served with us and sent others to join us at Hope Community Church. We are forever grateful to each of you. We echo the prayer of Paul who writes in Philippians 1, verse 3 through 5, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Thank you, Shades, with gratitude and hope the saints of Hope Community Church. Can we thank Shades Mountain Baptist? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Love you guys. Thank you. you. It's not in my notes, but I should also, when we talk about advisors and pastors, I should also tell you how much I love my wife, and she is the very best, and she deserves a thousand standing ovations, but we don't have time for it. We don't have time for it. Uh, Last month, we commissioned our friends at Cedar Creative uh, to do a video, a celebration video uh, for today to tell the story of hope. Uh, They've put it together, and we're going to show it now. I hope you enjoy it. Somebody enrolled me in Sunday school when I was three years old (laughs) because I've got the certificate in 1940. (laughs) I've never been anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I never even thought about going anywhere else. Some of our real good friends from high school invited us to come to McElwain, and we've been here ever since, about 63 years. I started here when I was eight years old, and I'm 81. When I was uh, in high school and college, McElwain was a booming church on this side of town. Uh, Preschool all the way up to senior adults was packed out every Sunday. Houses were being built. Young families were moving in. They got together and built the sanctuaries. It was awesome watching them do that. McElwain was a group of people who 
invested their lives in this church. I met Jesus here and I met my wife here and my kids were baptized here. Some of the greatest people who's ever walked on this face of earth, I think, are here or have been here. And that's the reason, I guess, for me, it was so hard to see our church die. It was, it, it was like losing a home when we thought we might have to close it. I don't know, the young people just didn't come like they used to, but, but the ones that were left, that were active, started praying. I believed that God still had a plan for this church and still does, and I believe he was gonna bring the right people in to help grow this church in the community. Everybody prayed and God answered that prayer with shades. Who'd ever heard of a church being adopted? We've heard of merging with churches, and I'd never heard of adoption. I was on the vision team that we decided to do all this stuff, yeah. and they brought Jacob over and Suzanne, and my first thought, these are children. I mean, they're <laughs> not either one old enough to do anything. Yeah, I just felt like he looked like a child to me. He still does. This shouldn't be going as well as it's going. If you just described it in a vacuum without all the people here, it's like, hey, a church, 125 years old, a bunch of senior adults are gonna have a pastor that looks like this, like he just graduated college yesterday, and they're just gonna commit to him and say, yeah, let's just keep going. It, it shouldn't be working that well. Now I say he's the best thing that's happened to this church. We love Jacob. I think the biggest thing was when the young people started coming and bringing their children, and it was, it was a wonderful thing. Our first Sunday here, we had three different people come up to us and say, oh, we haven't seen you before, welcome. And it wasn't like this, oh, we're waiting for you to come back and expecting you to come back. It was just, hey, we're happy you're here. People care that you're here. People care that, that you show up. They wanna know what your gifts and talents are. Yes, it is small, and that could be intimidating because you're like, oh gosh, like, people are gonna notice you. But like, yes, people are gonna notice you, and it's the good kind of notice. You're not gonna find gossip here. You're not gonna find complainers here. I've been at churches where you're told to come as you are, but it's come as you are, but like dress it up if you can. And I've never felt that here. We keep hearing over and over that it's different here, that the relationships are different, and it's like refreshing to people to come to church and not it be routine. It's felt like the number one thing for a long time has been surviving and we're now three years into church revitalization and that's not the number one thing anymore. We're past surviving. We're gonna thrive. So what does the number one thing need to be? And I, I want our number one thing to be the community that we foster here. I'm gonna tell you this. I have been through lots of churches. I've been through lots of church hurt and I have, I have seen the good and the bad and the ugly and it has been an answer to prayer. Ugh, I don't wanna cry. Just this church has been an answer to prayer. Having a church home is vital to, to having a fruitful life. Like, I wanna see myself at this church. I wanna put roots down at this church and I want to give and I want to be a part of the stories of this place. Like, it's just been so healing. This is what hope looks like. All of us have our own struggles and by having this community here, we're able to connect and realize that we're all in this together. Hope has grown to be family for us. I've been able to make some relationships here deeper than I've ever been able to before. It is so refreshing, and it really does give me hope that there are great things God's got in store for us in the days ahead. It's what makes Birmingham, to me, feel like home. I don't know, because it's hard to tell, it truly, if it will ever look like it did, but I don't know that it really needs to but the excitement of having somewhere that we're going, that's so encouraging. I think God is alive and well, and he's working. We need families to come and be a part of what we're doing. If you do come, be prepared that Jacob will tell story, and then at the end, he will be very emotional. <laughs> Bring your baggage, like sit it down next to you and just know that like you're in good company. No, no, this, this is not fancy. There, there's nothing about this, fan. there's no cool tricks or gimmicks, but the thing that uh, I like the most about that is like, when we say it, we mean it. Hope Community Church stands on the good news of Jesus. There is hope that when people are struggling, 
They're frustrated and anxious and don't know what's happening. They can't have hope. Uh, and we're a place that reminds one another of that every single Sunday. Stand together, church, sing this one. Great again.
our declaration today. I won't bow to I. I won't bow to idols. I'll stand strong and worship you. If it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice as your gratitude. Won't be formed by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified. 
Oh, let's pray together. Father, in this celebration day, we come to not celebrate what man is doing, but we come to celebrate what man has been able to do by setting their eyes on you and following your vision and following your will and your timing. It's not always been easy, but God, it's always been right. So as we open up your word, continue to teach us how to set our eyes on you. We celebrate what you have done. We thank you for what you're going to do because we know you're faithful. Open your word to us. Teach us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, church. Amen. Thank you. Whew. What a glorious day this has already been. Amen. I tell every pastor I know, I love state of the churches. And they go, why? I said, because you get to recount all the amazing things that God has done the past year and be able to give him honor and glory. And what an amazing report that was. And what a change. Uh, November 1st, 2020 is when I stood here. And it was your first day to be called Hope Community Church. And we shared all the aspirations and the hopes and the prayers. And it is just incredible what God has done. And so we rejoice. And Jacob, thankful uh, for your leadership and for all you've done and how much these people love you. And that is, that is very evident. Um, I couldn't help but reminisce, and I won't do much because I know we don't have much time. But um, when he told the story about um, needing the million dollars, uh, we were so convinced. I was so convinced this is what God wants us to do. And talking to Tom and Chad and others and Tim Wheat and uh, we just knew this had to be it, but we did the due diligence, and everybody kept telling me to tap the brakes, hold on, and sure enough, it's going to be about $300,000, and I, I knew our finances, I oh, yeah, well, think, well, then they came back and said, it's going to be 500000 I said, well, okay, that'll be all right. Uh, then they said, it's going to be 700000 I said, well, Chad and Tom won't get pay rate, pays, uh, salaries, <laughs> and I think we can, we can start making this work, and I thought it was going to be at seven hundred. And I remember us meeting uh, late one afternoon, and Tom had the final number. He said, it's, it's about a million dollars. And said, we, don't, we don't have it. I mean, there's, it's just not there. <laughs> and uh, so they walked out of that meeting. We were kind of down. And I walked out. I was driving home, and I said, that's just no way. There's absolutely no way that this is not supposed to happen. And... Um, I'm out, mean, rode around, I was thinking about it, and it was amazing when all of a sudden it hit. And I sat there and started thinking, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. We took a million dollars, cut our budget, and said, hey, we're just going to spend this, and our people have been giving through this COVID time at the same rate as the budget up here, so all our projections are we're going to give this, and we're only going to spend this, and guess what the difference is? A million dollars. I texted those guys. I said, I got the answer. I'll see you tomorrow. They said, no way. I said, I got it. You come. Nine o'clock. We're meeting my office. I'm going to lay it out to you. We've got this puppy worked out. They walked in there. I said, where did you come up with a million dollars? I laid it out. And it was like a Gomer Pyle thing. Golly. I mean, it was, whoa, are you serious? And man, you're talking about exciting. Going and sharing with our deacons and then moving forward with this. And God has just been all over it. And uh, just want to tell you that uh, just from my own personal walk and um, opportunities to serve as a, as a pastor, uh, two different churches in Ruston and at Shades Mountain, uh, that is, this is one of the high water marks of my entire ministry is to be able to see God take something like this to come alive. And I'll tell you one of the things that impressed me so much, the leadership of this church over three years ago, when we sat and met with them, and uh, they said, God's not finished with us yet, and they're not finished with this location. And you have been blessed with some incredible saints uh, of God. And so you need to give them a hand. Wow. So thank you. Thank all of you. Well, here, Jacob, and as I move, I don't want to mess up the mic, guys. So if I go to the side, just wave me back uh, uh, here. Is that, is that it? Okay, we're still good. We're still good. We're still good. All right. I like to usually stretch the envelope until they go, no, no, move this way. So this is what Jacob calls me. He says, I want you to close it out. And uh, so I'm going to do the state of the church. 
I want you to give us a sermon to kind of send us out. I said, okay. He said, I've had this phrase in my head, and it's called hope for tomorrow. I said, oh, that's good. That's good. I said, you got a passage of scripture? No, 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 don't have a, don't have a scripture. Hope for tomorrow. I said, okay. I, I said, so kind of any particular direction, you know, you want me to go? Hope for tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. I got three words. That's what I'm going on. So, folks, I'm preaching hope for tomorrow, and let's hope it's the right hope for tomorrow. When I was a pastor in Ruston, Louisiana, uh, there was an African-American uh, former football coach who was starting a church, and, he, and it started meeting in a, uh, in a hotel there, <laughs> the one hotel, the Holiday Inn. And as they were meeting there in the Holiday Inn, man, they started growing. And this guy was outgoing, charismatic, great guy. I really, I really love this guy. And uh, I kept reading about what was going on. And then we got word that another church down the street was no longer going to be needing their building and this church was going to move in their building and they had a kickoff sunday celebration sunday first sunday in that building myself and one other guy from the association went we were the only two white guys in that whole church i mean they were just filled it was filled all these african-american people in the in the community and all different uh, kind of socioeconomic status it was great and I remember when he stood up, and I remember the title of his sermon, and I remember the first words that he said. He said, don't park. Don't park. He says, hey, we're in this building now, but we have not arrived. This is not to be a parking spot. This is to be a launching pad, and we are to go from here. And so when you hear all the excitement on this uh, report, the state of the church and all that is happening, it's easy for this to be like a pregame talk before a sports event. It's being like in the locker room getting ready to play a football game and that coach is standing up and he's getting you so jacked up you can't wait. And all of a sudden, you're fired up, and he's talking, he's loving it. And you guys are high-fiving each other, hitting shoulder pads, loving it. And then they say, let's get ready to go out. No, no, this is fun. Let's stay right here. Give me another talk. You, assistant coach, you give me another talk. Oh, that was good. Trainer, oh, I love you. Give me a talk over here. And we're just going to stay right here in the locker room because we're all buds, and we're loving it. But you see, that's not why we got you fired up. Isn't that correct? We got you fired up so you can run through those doors, get out on the playing field, and that, that's where it's all happening. And, and so when you think about hope for tomorrow, what it means is get out of here. That as soon as the service is over, you need to get out of here, and you need to get out there into this community. You say, well, where is there? There is found in John chapter 5. So I like if you've got your Bibles, I want you to open to John chapter 5. And in John chapter 5, we're going to read a story, some of you are very familiar, a story about Jesus and healing a man at the pool of Bethesda. In John chapter 5, starting in the second verse, he says, Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roof colonnades. And in these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him. He said, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool because when the water is stirred up and while I'm going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, get up. Take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and he walked. It's a scene that has been excavated. It's this pool of Bethesda. They believe it was a trapezoidal uh, shape, about 220 feet wide and uh, 315 or more feet long. 
That's longer than a football field. So just imagine this football field in 220 feet wide, and there's a partition right down the center. There are these five colonnades all around, and in those porticos, those colonnades, there were just the sick, the lame, uh, the atrophied. I mean, it's just all these people that are sick and, and, uh, and looking for some type of healing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a sad area. And it's a difficult area to, to even go. In fact, it was so disgusting that the Pharisees even refused to walk through there for fear that it would mess up their ritual purity. So they wouldn't even go there. And this is the place that Jesus himself chose to go and to walk into. Listen, hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow is getting your hands dirty, ministering to messy people. It's stepping into situations that don't have easy answers. Because, you know, in some sense, folks, we're all a mess. We just pretend better inside here in the church. And we kind of look better just sitting in pews. But the bottom line is we all kind of got messy lives. And we don't want to just hide it here. We want to get out into the community and just get our hands dirty in ministry with messy people. Hope for tomorrow. Don't get pharisaical. You've got a community to reach. Jesus didn't let the messiness stop him. And in fact, Jesus is calling all of us to this mess. Now, in your Bible, you've probably got a little footnote. If you've gotten as old as I have, you have absolutely no idea how to read it because it is minuscule writing at the very bottom. But what it shows is there was a scribal notation in the second half of verse 3 and all of verse 4 that was added later. And it says this. They're waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred the water. And whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was healed of whatever disease that he had. So most likely as these people laid around these pools, there would be an intermittent stirring of the water. Most people believe it was probably some spring that was underneath it and every so often it would bubble up. And there was the thought that if you could be the first person in the pool you could get the healing waters and you would be healed of whatever situation, malady that you had. And so this is what they're going off of. And this is where all these people are sitting around just waiting for that. And then we get introduced in verse 5 to an invalid, a man who has uh, been an invalid for 38 years. Now just hearing his story, you believe there's some type of paralysis or lameness And he is one of the people that is laying there. And in verse 6, it says, when Jesus saw him lying there. Now, there were lots of people there. And yet, when Jesus chose to walk over, out of all the people, that one guy. I always questioned that. I always wondered, why that guy? What was it about that one particular guy? I remember, I think I got some insight into this at a deacon's retreat. We had a bonfire one night, and Dr. Alex Childs, who was a deacon, began to just talk about his practice. And he says, in my practice, I deal with patients who have experienced some of the greatest pain, and thus they're in need of some of the greatest ministry. And that kind of hit me. And I thought about this passage. Maybe Jesus, with all of his supernatural knowledge, as he looks out through all these different people, he sees the one man who has the greatest pain, who has the greatest need, who has the greatest helplessness, and who has the greatest hopelessness. And so that's the individual that he goes to. And and, and it says that, that he knew this man. He knew his history. Supernaturally knew his history. And so he walks up to him and he asks him the question, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? There are often times in the Bible that we think that Jesus asks silly questions, don't we? Um, I think of Jacob and myself. We both have a tendency to get sarcastic. Would that be correct? And um, uh, I tell my wife it's a spiritual gift. (laughs) She says it'll get you killed one day, but that's okay. Um, It's almost like if, if you or I had been laying there, I think our first response would be, Duh, what do you think I'm here for? I've been laying here for years, and it's surely not the view. Yeah. No, but he asked him, he says, 
do you want to be healed? And different people have different reasons for it as to what of And I remember reading one where someone said he had probably been there so long that he had ever lost hope that he would get healed. And you'll hear in his answer, he says, you know, there's no one that can help me even to get into the water. Other people get into it first, so he's hopeless and he's helpless. So maybe he doesn't really have a desire to get healed. Maybe he's just written it off. It may be just the fact that some stranger walks up to him and looks him in the eye and says, do you want to be healed? Now, I love watching The Chosen, and probably, hopefully, many of you do too. And I looked at that scene. I reviewed that scene, about a a four-and-a-half-minute clip of what they showed on The Chosen. And and my thought was, uh, exactly what Jesus did there, is that he would get down in this man's face and and talk to him. And and as this guy's laying down, it's almost as Jesus would be just here to be able to look him in the face and just ask him the question. Do you want to be healed? It's interesting the way they did it with the chosen is the guy then becomes to say, well, you know, I, I don't have anybody or others. He says, no, 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 I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm, look, I'm, you, do you want to be healed? And he went off a little bit on tangent and he says, I don't care about that. <laughs> do you want to be healed? He's just zeroing in on it. Do you want to be healed? And as the man thought about it, he then came back, and he's sitting there saying, I have no idea who this man is, but you know, this guy could be someone that could help me get in the water. And he says, well, let me just tell you my predicament. I'm laying here. The water gets stirred. There's no one here to put me in the water before everybody else gets in there. And that seems to sort of be his, his best answer that he can give. Well, hope for tomorrow. You look beyond people's physical condition or their economic standing, whether it's high or low, and look right into their soul and see their greatest need. Ask the penetrating questions to show that you care and that you want to help. Your presence and your perceptions can begin to lower defenses and open up lives to hear the message that you want to share. And that is the good news of the gospel. Let's hope for tomorrow. Let's just don't assume anything. Let's ask the penetrating question. If you get a blow-off answer, stay with it. Do you want to be healed? What is the hurt in your life? And stay with it. Jesus did it with this man. He gave his answer. And in this man's answer, he showed he had a helplessness and a hopelessness. I mean, in the rare chance that the stirring happened while he was there, he couldn't get in. And since he didn't have any help, he had no hope. And so he's got no hope, no help. And he said, maybe the best you can do is help put me into the water. (laughs) But Jesus offered so much more. You know what he offered? He offered himself. And he offered his power. Jesus was not going to be just a friend to help him maintain his false illusion of life, but it was to free him from the bondage of the lies that were around him that were crushing his hope. This is all a lie that's around you. This is not where the healing is. And you're sitting around all these different people, and they're just promulgating these lies over here. You don't need to be listening to that anymore. Hope for tomorrow is boldly telling people about the way, the truth, and the life. Not propping up the lies of this world and all its false promises. Not sitting back and letting people be deceived by Satan's lies that permeate this world. It is confidently standing on the Word of God, sharing the Word of God, and seeing the power of God change lives. That is hope for tomorrow. And so in the midst of this, what Jesus does is he gives three commands. He says... Get up. Do the one thing you cannot do because I asked you to do it through the power that I'm going to give you. Get up. And he's telling them to go on and get up. Jesus brings them face to face with the one thing that seems impossible and he commands them to act at that point. No longer do you need to be in in bondage to this malady. It's time to shake that off. And I'm asking you through the power of Jesus Christ to get up. And then 
Once he gets up, he tells him, take up your bed. Take up your bed. He said, well, why do you need to take up his bed? Hey, don't leave it back there. We don't want there to be a temptation for you to come back to. You need to take cuts with your old life. I remember I used to tell people, <laughs> I taught this before, I said, what does it mean, take up your mat? I said, what it means is if, uh, if you say, I don't want to be an alcoholic anymore, don't leave a six-pack in the refrigerator, okay? Cut ties with anything else that was causing you to drift away. And so he says, take up that mat. I don't want anything pulling you back over into this, into this life. But then the last thing he says is walk. He says, walk, move forward in your new condition. Move forward in your new condition. And in that moment, when the will of man touched the will of God in Christ, he made contact with the healing power that flashed across that line of connection, health of spirit and of body and of soul. What we call it is born again. What we call it is adopted into the family of life. What we call it is a changed life. Hallelujah. And that's what happened to this man. And so right there, came into that relationship, that confrontation, that encounter with Jesus Christ, and his life changed forever. Hope for tomorrow. Here's hope for tomorrow. It is offering this community light in the midst of darkness. Hope in the midst of confusion and despair. And giving them Jesus. Inviting them to come and to join us here with other fellow strugglers to love Jesus and to worship him. Well, as those Pharisees do, and Jesus messed up again, because when he healed him and he told him to take up his bed, what day of the week do you think it was? It was the Sabbath. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> I just, I just, you got to laugh when you read Scripture. Here's the guy, he's carrying his mat. And these Pharisees say, hey, hey, get over here. You ain't supposed to be carrying that mat. Who told you you can do that? The guy that healed me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I couldn't walk for 38 years. The guy healed me, and you know what he told me? He said, pick up my mat. Well, I can't believe you're not supposed to be able to pick up that mat. Well, they gave him a hard time. He moved on, and Jesus comes to him. And when Jesus comes to him, he says, hey, I see that you're well. Sin no more, that nothing worse might happen to you. Sin no more. Listen, Christ never says to anyone, sin no more, until he first says you were made whole. And as you make contact with Jesus in an act of willing surrender, he gives you the power which enables you to live no longer under the mastery of sin, but a victorious, God-honoring life, a life of wholeness. Hope for tomorrow? Hope for tomorrow is leading people to Christ, but not leaving them there. It is discipling them and helping them grow into fully devoted followers of Christ, living transformed lives and bringing honor and glory to his name. This is hope for tomorrow. It is helping to reach this community for Christ, not just to check a box off, but then to bring them in, to disciple them, and to grow them up. So that years from now, when you stand here and you celebrate your 25th anniversary as Hope Community Church, you will have stories of people who have experienced that growth. You know, it's interesting. I'm a, I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. And for those that don't know, that's a musician. All right. he, uh, <laughs> they said, what position does he play? Uh, you know, Billy Joel, he's an incredible songwriter, uh, singer, musician, just incredible. And uh, they asked him a question on the Billy Joel channel. And uh, he said, uh, when you sit down at the piano, and you just place your fingers on the piano, what is your default? What would you just normally go to? Now, you think of all the music this guy's written. Unbelievable. What would you think? He says, Beethoven. He says, because I was trained as a child in classical piano, and that's just my chops. And my default is Beethoven. Gosh, I was thinking. Wouldn't that be great that years from now, kids that are raised up in this church, and they come back as adults, and, uh, and you call them up here, and you just ask them a question. And you say, say when things are difficult in life, and, and, and when, you, when you're just uncertain about stuff, kind of what's your default? What do you go to? You know, I go back to third grade vacation Bible school, and the verses that I was taught that's what I go to. It's God's word. You know, I learned that as a child here at Hope Community 
church. Isn't that what you want? Now, see, that's a hope for tomorrow because you have invested in people's lives and it has grown. So, hope for tomorrow. Almost four years ago, the senior leadership of this church made the decision to reaffirm their belief and their commitment that what God started in 1895 at this location, he wanted to continue. So today, after three years of hard work and exciting progress, Hope Community Church is poised to once again be a vibrant place of hope and helping a surrounding community of about 55,000 people, many who are lost spiritually, feeling helpless, and feeling hopeless. And for the lame man in John chapter 5, Jesus gave him a hope for today. He gave him a new start. But folks, you know what else he gave him? He gave him a hope for tomorrow and for each day that stretched out before him. As you go outside these walls and into this community sharing the love of Jesus and the hope of the gospel, there should be a pep in your step and a confidence in your walk knowing that what, as the Lord wills, Hope Community Church will be here today and tomorrow and the next. Hope for tomorrow. It's kind of like a play on words, Jacob. When you said hope for tomorrow, hope for tomorrow was a biblical truth that once I become a child of God, I live a life of hope and expectation today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, all the way up to the last day and into my first day in heaven. Isn't that right? We have that hope. And that hope is every day, and it is the next day. And you know why? Because I know who holds tomorrow, and there's no safer place to be than in the hands of my Lord. And hope for tomorrow also means that, Lord willing, Hope Community Church will be here in this community serving the needs of these people today, tomorrow, the next tomorrow, the next tomorrow for years and years to come. There's like a weightiness and a solidarity to tomorrow, isn't there? You know, have you ever had a situation where maybe a child, maybe a spouse, maybe a friend going through a rough time and um, you're, you're talking to them, you're giving them some comfort and they've got something really big the next day and you look at them and you say, hey, I'll be there tomorrow. What does that do for them? <sighs> There's something about a good weightiness to know. You're going to be there tomorrow? I sure am. Hope Community Church, you're going to be there tomorrow. When you go out in this community and you begin to share with people, you begin to serve people in this community, you're not just some flyby, you're not just checking off a box. Because after you've talked to them, they say, well, where are you going to be tomorrow? <laughs> I'm going to be right here. And guess what? Hope Community Church is going to be here tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And we will be here to serve you. So for Hope Community Church, today is a celebration of autonomy. But remember that today is the first step toward tomorrow. Let me give you an opportunity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this glorious church. I thank you for its history. I thank you for those in 1895 who felt the call of God to claim this community, this area, and to say, we're going to place a lighthouse right here. And then, Lord, over all the years, so much great ministry. But then in these past few years where there have been those difficulties, those saints, those leaders that you raised up in this place who had that same call, that same fire in their bones, and just said, this, this isn't all. There's more. And then, Father, to be able to stand today and to see incredible fruits of what has been taking place these last three years. I thank you for this church. And, Lord, I do pray for it for tomorrow. But as we close, Lord, just a word is for every person here, myself included. As we've heard these challenges, may we look at our own lives and say, God, how do I match up with those? Am I one of the Pharisees that wouldn't walk into the mess? Or am I willing to get involved in the messes of other people's lives? Are there some people that I need to be making that phone call to? Are there some people I need to make that visit? Are there some relationships that I need to straighten out? And then, Lord, for each of us, maybe we look and say, Lord, are there things that I need to get straightened out in my own life? 
And especially if you're a member here of Hope and you say, man, I want to be part of this army. But Lord, I need to be right with you so I can be even more effective with that. So during these times of response, may you give us guidance and leadership. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Danny Church. Uh, let us stand. We're going to respond to this good news by giving thanks to God through his son, Jesus Christ, who guarantees the assurance of our tomorrow. But we're also going to have an invitation. If you've never put your faith in Jesus, if your relationship with Jesus is struggling, if you need some encouragement, I'm going to be up front. I'm going to ask Mike Hill to come and be up front here as well. We would love to pray with you and encourage you. Church, let's respond and sing.
Amen. Oh, has it been a great celebration today? It is so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here to celebrate with us. I'm so excited to be with you. Hope for tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Isn't God good? Thank you to Jeff and his team for putting uh, today together. And if you know me, yes, we'll clap for Jeff. And if you know me... My extroversion is going nuts because I see all my friends in the room together and I want to hug you all, but I also know it's late, so I'm going to say, Hope Community Church, if you see somebody you don't know, it's a friend of mine, give them a hug, thank them for being here, put your email in the offering plate, I'll email you this week. You're all invited to lunch, but before we go, we like to recite and receive our benediction together. So let us say together, today we have loved God. Let's go from this place, loving our neighbor and sharing the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Go and hope, church. <laughs>